Dawn, September 17, 1862. Following an exchange of artillery fire across the Antietam Creek, two divisions of Confederates are in the command of Jackson take a position just north of a small white church north of Sharpsburg. The view of enemy advance is obscured by a large cornfield owned by the Miller family. The 1st Union Corps, under the command of Joseph Hooker, proceed south in the last minutes of dark, unsure where the enemy is specifically located, leading our New Yorkers and Mid Midwestern men. When they emerge through the corn, they're greeted by the opening volleys of Douglas's Georgians. Sensing the death trap the cornfield is soon to become, the Iron Brigade quickly rushes out of the corn and encircle a regiment from Louisiana within the Hagerstown Pike. They then encounter Virginians who rush forward, only to be pushed back themselves by Marcena Patrick's New Yorkers. Walter Phelps' East Iron Brigade begins to slug it out at the edge of the cornfield. Three more brigades emerge out of the East Woods and begin engaging James Walker's brigade, the substitute colonel wounded as the battle widened. The Louisiana Tigers rush forward to plug a hole formed in the Confederate lines, but soon they found themselves advancing into a maelstrom as the 12th Massachusetts lead their brigade into the cornfield, their colonel mortally wounded. Although taking 67% casualties, they emerge and help push the Confederates back into the West Woods. Wave of Blue flows toward the Dunker Church, but is stunted by the arrival of Hood's division, which includes the Texas Brigade. These men rush out from behind the Dunker Church and push the Union back to the cornfield. The first Texas, full bravado, continue ahead into the cornfield to shoot their foe off the field. But in the socks of corn, they become shot to pieces by the arrival of Pennsylvanians. Only a fraction of the ragged first exit the now trampled field. Around 7.30, the lead elements of the 12th Corps emerge from the woodlots. Helmed by Joseph Mansfield, who had petitioned for much of the war to be given a field command, he eagerly moved his men into position, but was quickly shot from his horse. His men continued on, smashing into the remnants of Hood's line, but soon stalled by the timely arrival of Confederates rushed from the center of Lee's line. Fire was exchanged by both sides until Green's division pushed forward and made their advance toward the Dunker Church. With the rebels on the run, it looked like Union victory was in grass. But a bullet to the foot from a sharpshooter puts Hooker out of action for the rest of the day. His second also injured. The attack stalled from a lack of leadership. As the 1st and 12th Corps retired for safer ground, John Sedgwick's division of the 2nd Corps begins to march east to west across the bloody ground in front of the Dunker Church. They are in an unusual formation, boxed up one brigade after another as they move toward the West Woods. Their Corps commander had recklessly rushed them into battle and not bothered properly to put them into battle formation, and as they entered the West Woods, two whole Confederate divisions rushed into their flanks. The Union disaster ensues. Virginians and Mississippians rush forward, sweeping up Sedgwick's men and whisking them back into the broken ranks of the First Corps. Among those reaping the benefits of poor positioning was John Hildrip, a devout Methodist at just 22 who fell into line with the 30th Virginia. But his future was put in jeopardy when a Union bullet cut into his lung just past the Dunkard Church. By 9 a.m., the fighting for the Confederate left had at last ebbed. In the four-hour struggle, some 13,000 had spilled their blood, only for stalemate to fall upon the landscape. The battle was just getting started, however.